Welcome back to the Gentleman Ultras pay-per-view. I'm Richard Hall, just looking through the headlines this morning. Uh, a little bit late, I apologise. <laughs> First of all, we see in Gazetta, I mean, there's a lot of focus on this, uh, all about Allegri here. Um, it says here that, well, Juve, desire of Allegri. So it's quite an interesting uh, topic because they're talking about the rescheduled fixture against Napoli, which is... Uh, which is tomorrow. Um, it said that recently Agnelli had met Max to talk about possible return to the old lady. Uh, obviously with Perlo under quite a big deal of pressure now, especially after the results against Torino on the weekend. It looks as though if he finishes outside the top four, he certainly will lose his job. Um, I, again, you know, the, it's all in all the papers follows through really. Uh, again, you know, it touches this on the Correo de la Sport again, saying that this is the real key a uh, key couple of weeks for Perlo, even to the point where, you know, if tonight's, tomorrow night's result doesn't go well, that will really ramp it up. Tuto Sport, a little better, I think, here, just saying that it's not all Perlo's fault. Uh, they're still believing, it says that Bianca, we still believe in the project for the moment uh, and confirm that the coach is the right man. Uh, they're going to be quite an interesting uh, signal from tomorrow's game, especially when Dybala, Artur and McKenney all return. Will he play them after their breach of the COVID uh, regulations? Who knows? Talking of COVID, unfortunately, it seems to be that we have to do this all the time because of the times we live in. Uh, six players tested positive uh, from the Italian squad who, from their COVID outbreak, including uh, Cranio and the goalkeeper, well, Cranio, the goalkeeper, and Sidigo, the other. Uh, so that would be interesting to see just how that affects the mid-game mid fixtures, mid-week fixtures, should we try and say. Uh, this is very heavily focused on on Corriere della Sport, where it says COVID nightmare, for Juve Napoli, a third Juve player has tested positive, and the fifth of the game again. Um, again, at Demarel and Benucci is another uh, concern for the club, and then that puts them under more pressure in some respects uh, to play the likes of maybe McKenny, Dybala, and Artur, all of who are not um, <laughs> not top of the list, should we say, um, at, the, at the moment, as we mentioned before. A little bit on Inter here, uh, obviously everyone focusing on Inter's good, good run of form. Uh, can they get it over the line now, uh, especially after they've got to take on Sassuolo? Uh, here in Gazzetta de Lisboa, it talks of Inter's golden age, from Lukaku to Barella, why it can become a cycle. And it just talks of the fact that there's a real mixture of youth there. Um, obviously, you know, it does depend a little bit on the ownership situation and what, how that's going to turn out. But at this moment in time, it looks positive. Uh, they've got a good balance and that cycle is how it tends to start because the balance is here now and the young players can move forward for quite a few years. Uh, Tuto Sport also, um, it says here, uh, Kante and Lukaku, Inter to win the Scudetto, they will stay. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of um, going through on the ownership again. Obviously, this causes uh, questions over the likes of the future of Antonio Conte, the future of Romelu Lukaku, uh, talking of maybe 120 million for the Belgium striker, Conte, of course, will want funds in the summer. So, again, you know, it, it's not conclusive for Inter that this is um, a cycle that's going to necessarily happen, as Gazetta pointed out. Um, there are a lot of outside, uh, well, the parameters, really, in some respects. Um, the light of the future of Latoro Martinez has been questioned recently as well. Um, so it would be a real shame for Inter in some respects if they can't get the, uh, the finances in place uh, by the end of the season. Or if they really did blow this and, and, and throw away the Scudetto from this uh, lead, it would be quite, I think, especially for uh, Inter's mentality, it would be quite catastrophic. So, you know, it's not done yet, that's for certain. Uh, but again, you know, they've got to look here, um, as, as you say, you know, and, and try and get that over the line. I think that that would be some signal of intent because, uh, you know, if Inter do win this title, it does then bring into question, you know, just what Juve do, how Milan then... Um, bolstered air ranks in the summer and so forth and talking of Milan well this is an interesting one here in Gazetta uh, just right at the uh, at the top there it talks of um, you can just about see it there we go and it's all about Gigio Gigio and um, Ibra it says that Ibra is ready to sign um, which is great for, for Milan but the goalkeeper even though he's got an offer of 12 million euro uh, is still holding out and it doesn't look like he's going to do that. I mean, I don't know how many times Milan can go around the circles with this. It's whether they could recoup some really uh, some good money for him and go again. But then is he not one of the most integral players um, in that squad? You know, he's integral for Italy, he's integral for the Rossoneri. So it really does uh, depend there. So 
that's a quick roundup of the morning headlines and uh, it's chaffing now from me.